Bradley, you're about to start the longest arc in One Piece. After yeah, Bob for Bradley. the. Uh, is uh, is Wano longer already? No, it's like four chapters away from being as long. Jesus Christ! It will be the longest. Fucking but it's not Christ. It's gonna be the longest by a lot, actually. Oh yeah. Uh, this is just a really sweet page. Um, I don't know. There's an SBS about this. I don't know if Bradley read it. If you do read it, Bradley, and you would like to comment on the SBS that asked about this. Yeah, I've read every SBS so far, but I don't know if I remember anything about this. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. It might, it might come up in a chapter near the end that you haven't gotten to then. We'll come yeah. back to it, but there's some very interesting foreshadowing there. Uh, I like how the crew is so against the Alliance, but then I also like the consistent reinforcement that, like, by the way, Law, an alliance means something different to Luffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you Luffy immediately take advantage of this? Yeah, he's I like when Luffy's like, hey, you're not gonna trust me, are you? He's like, nah. But I yeah, like... this is the second hit of like the betrayal aspect of alliances. Mm -hmm. With specifically with pirate alliances, so did, Bradley, how did you feel about Luffy getting into an alliance like this? Did you ever expect it? Does it feel in character? Uh, I never expected this, uh, uh, but it feels very in character for, I think, both of them because I think Law just, you know, recognizes that Luffy's the shit, kind of. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, Luffy is probably... I, I, it's, I think Luffy's pretty much always going to accept someone saying anything even remotely close to, hey, you want to be friends? So... Yeah, I feel you might be hitting something because Oda could have very well written this to be like Luffy saying no because he doesn't want help taking out the four emperors. Because yeah. Luffy mentions at some point in this arc where it's like, oh no, my plan is to eventually take them all yeah. on. I just don't oh, yeah. want to start with Shanks. Like yeah. any one of the other three is fair game for me. Um, but mm -hmm. like at the same time, it feels just as in character to be like, yeah, fuck it. Friend, like yeah. Luffy, Let's fucking go. Luffy since early on is not like someone who's like I have to do it myself. He does that when yeah. it's for the safety of his crew, but mm -hmm. he's always willing to accept help. Um, and he's also, and he's also said multiple times that like there mm -hmm. is no cheating in a pirate fight. Like like you, whatever wins wins in a pirate engagement, and that's something that like has been kind of echoed a couple times throughout the series. So. I, uh, I agree. Uh, this is just kind of a status update of who's in who. So yeah, and they, they get swapped back, except for Nami and Sanji. And I, so, <laughs> Nami gets swapped over to Sanji's body now. I, I do like Frankie arguing with Luffy. It's like, why did you use your ultimate attack on me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we learn about the forest gigantification experiments, which is something important to note. And that's what the kids are really here for. And they conclusively find out that, like, yeah, these kids need to get rescued from this place because it's just all sorts of fucked. Mm -hmm. um. And then uh, Luffy gets Law to help him. And I love Law's uncomfortable faces as, yeah. like, he realizes what he's gotten into, like, himself into, <laughs> especially this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is, that... This is going to be in our tier list for best panels in One Piece because, like, everyone oh. loves this one. And, like, we yeah. got to talk about it whenever we this do that. This panel's so good that it's its own unit in Treasure Cruise. Yes, it is. It's the chopper dual unit with Law. Um, yeah, it's kind of great. <laughs> I like how he eventually just decides to wear chopper like a sword charm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chopper's like, yeah, okay. We get slime! introduced to the big old slime. God, this thing's fucking cool. It's like the fucking Hydra, but also cool. Yeah. I was about to say, but cooler, but I'm like, nah, they're both pretty fucking badass. Yeah. <laughs> One of life's great mysteries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, really good. There, this is before they run into the... Or this is where they find the footprints of the cool Yeti brothers, or Yeti cool where brothers. They, where are they yelling about down there? Just, like, about the Yeti's existence in general, in the bottom right-hand corner? Well, they're just, like, arguing about... 
And I just like Brooks, like ah, and I just simply like to debate. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's just like I'm. I'm in a. I'm in a. I'm the third wheel in a very established loving relationship right now. So I just kind of fit in. I do like the joke of, um. Not the joke, but the plan of Nami sending Zoro after Sanji because she knows for a fact that they will just constantly be at each other's throats. So Sanji will never have time to actually admire Nami's body. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> she only gets to really cop one feel in the, yeah. in the time of need. So Kinemon hates pirates for some reason. So you got to imagine he has some sort of past with pirates. <laughs> of course. And just this is just a fun page. This, yeah, I, I love how Oda split up the crew here. So you got Luffy, uh, Robin, Frankie, and then you got Zoro, Sanji, and Brooke, and then you got the mm -hmm. rest of the crew uh, with the children. So it's like yeah. Oda's always done a great job of split ups. And Chopper's gone with Law, so it's Usopp and Nami with the children. And yeah, Chopper's on. Chopper and Law is a great little split up too. Mm -hmm. Name a more iconic duo. I like this. This is just cute. Yeah. Robin's so cheeky, and the monkey's like, oh, I don't know why I'm beating you. <clears throat> what is this? Uh, Sanji looking like Leonardo DiCaprio is just a fun oh, okay. thing. That's who Oda... No, no, wait, no, sorry. That Someone is asking about that, but really he's modeled after uh, Steve, Steve Buscemi. Buscemi in Reservoir Dogs, so I get my Ter Quentin Tarantino X One Piece crossover after all. <laughs> Always was there. Always was there. I just didn't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Luffy Luffy just went straight for the objective like a fucking nerd and grabbed Caesar as soon as he popped up, showed up. I mean, gotta respect him. Caesar's yeah. attacks are so cool here. Um, I really like the land of nothing where he just suffocates you within a certain range. So you have to fight him at a certain range when he's got that active. Mm -hmm. And then he's got... Poison gases, he's got sleeping agents, he's got explosives. Like, this is one of the coolest Logias in the series, I'd say. Yeah. I liked this page spread for a lot of reasons. Number one, because, like, Luffy inhaling the gas was just one of my most, like, what the fuck moments in One Piece. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, and then it was also cool because it's like, it's cool. Like, I don't, Luffy has a resistance to poison now because yeah. of fucking Magellan. Well, really, um, it's because of Ivankov, but because of Magellan. Or yeah, and then also, I think it's cool how like us, the readers, just recognize that Logia fruits are usually OP as shit. And here we see a Logia user. Like, how dare you compare me to a mere Paramythia? And I'm like, he like they even in the universe they know that like Logia is just fucking OP. It's true. <laughs> However, Magellan's poison comes out comes off as much stronger not counting the land of death poison because that seems pretty intense that seems that's not from caesar though that's more of like he crafted that yeah it, it's actually it's, kind of clever like we can talk yeah. about it he gave a vat of extremely toxic poison an axolotl fruit and created a axolotl like slime monster that he will then give a chemical to to detonate into a massive gas cloud. Like, it, it's such an intricate but, like, lore-wise mm -hmm. cool weapon. Yeah. And uh, it also makes sense that he has the means to feed it a devil fruit because he was, like, Vegapunk's right-hand man for so long. Mm -hmm. And Vegapunk is the one who, like, invented that method. I was about to say technology. I actually don't know how they feed inanimate objects double fruit so we're, I gonna assume, we're gonna assume it's technology but you're right so he has one part of the equation which is knowing how to feed it but then also yeah. we find out that caesar himself is part of a massive like devil fruit creation scheme yes so which like holy we'll, fuck we'll i was talking about expecting. that because that's got big implications but yo yeah. mystery man virgo shows up he's pretty cool. handy virgo's design is so cool and i love how he fights with the hockey hardened bamboo stick i just think he looks so fucking sick yeah what do you think about his food on his face bradley uh whenever he first appeared i, I like i saw it and i was like i don't know what that is i don't know if it's like a a growth <laughs> no well, i thought it was like a, it was a some kind of when i first saw it I thought it was like some kind of a thing he talks into, like a communication device that's on his face. 
Uh, and then when I found out it was a piece of burger, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so Pretty good gag. He immediately shows up and starts beating up our OP OP boy. So you already know he's serious business, but oh, also yeah. like you know that they've been expecting Law to turn on Joker for quite a bit. They they yeah. you can tell they've had the sense that it was coming. Mm-hmm. God damn, this is like I just got this for how hardcore this fucking smack to the head feels. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, Dude, like I, I can hear it. Yeah. It's a big old whap. That's Mr. Virgo to you. He demands respect from you. God damn. It's if very humbling to see this face. OP character. But what were you saying, Joe? He's got this fucking hamburger on his face. I just every time I see it, it just makes me laugh. I love I love the contrast. And like when oh, they're like, too. wait, Virgo, you didn't do that. And he's like, ah, yeah, you're right, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh I like uh swimming Nami. So like Sanji used his observation hockey to locate the torso. Yeah, I really like yes. that. Yes. We talked about how Zoro, Sanji, and Luffy all have forms of hockey, so we know like Sanji has observation and hardening, <laughs> I believe. But I think Zoro Zoro might also have both, but only Luffy has all three. Yeah. I think actually um God, what's his name? Uh, Sanji hasn't used hardening yet in this arc, if mm. I remember correctly. I think because I remember he was having there's he fights Virgo for a little bit and actually was struggling a little bit hard like with it because he was just hitting him so well, hard. Virgo comes off as like a specialist in hardening hockey, like so it's comes probably like freak. way above maybe like even Luffy's at this point. Yeah. I do like this guy in the bottom. It's like I can't even identify the difference between like his torso and his fish, and then he realizes it's in the shark's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, there he is. There's the boy, and he's a very tall lad. God damn. He's from the land of Wano, but I love how he immediately like prostrates himself. It's like I owe you yeah. my life. Mm-hmm. So it's like he he was playing hard to get, but like he has no choice but to yeah. accept the fact that they really came through for him. Deep down, they always loved each other. He has a lot of pride. I think I. I also like that his. I like his name is Foxfire Kinemon. I think that's just. He's, it's sick. Right. And he has the ability to cut any flame, which is what he just did. Yeah. In this scene. Yeah. It's so sick. Like it's it's such a cool ability to give like just some dude. I very much like how Zoro takes interest in in Kinemon and like I want to see what these Wano Samurai are up to. But like that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because this is no Ryuma didn't set himself on fire. Uh, Zoro did that, right? No, well, Zoro set Ryuma on fire with a sword strike that lit him on fire. Because that's yeah. how that works. Um, this is uh, the S- some... this is the SBS I mentioned earlier. So it's pretty just something neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not nothing. Not nothing here. Okay. All right, it'll it'll be made known. Uh, I love how Robin here is like kind of nostalgic on Luffy. <laughs> you would you in a cell with Sea Stone, yeah. yeah, with Smoker. It's like here we are again, just like Alabasta. It's just cute. There's a lot of callbacks to the pre time skip in this arc because they talk about Magellan and they talk about Alabasta, Alabasta and they, they talk about Bellamir. Yeah. They they talk about some thriller bark stuff near the end, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. We find out that we finally find out the Joker they've been talking about is none other than Don Quixote do Flamingo. Did you yes. predict that, Bradley, or did this was this a twist? Uh, I did not. I had no idea who Joker was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I, like there's nothing. There's been no necessary hint that um, Law has any relation to do Flamingo. Mm-hmm. But seems like they have some beef. I think um, for me, like it was, I already knew that Dressrosa was after this. And I knew it, it had Do Flamingo in it, and so I, I immediately was like, "Oh, I think Joker's Do Flamingo," and I think that's how I ended up making you the cheated. connection there. I, now, I mean, <laughs> a couple of ways you could have known this. Yeah, Do, ah, uh, but you haven't seen. Doflamingo's well you have seen Doflamingo's flag because you mm-hmm. saw it on Buffalo's teeth. So we'll start there. Buffalo's teeth has Doflamingo's flag. That smile icon was found in the slave house 
in Sam Bowie. Yeah. But even back then, we knew that Joker or that Doflamingo was part of that slave trade because there's a scene where he talks to the guy who so, runs the slave house. Mm-hmm. But um, you do get this sense then that Doflamingo is involved in black market trade, so you could have potentially gotten it from that. Yes. Caesar! 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 Fucking brown beard. Brown beard pulling out his Joseph Joestar. He finally realizes Caesar's a piece of shit, and he tries his best, but, like, you're not going to hit gas, man. Yeah, oh, right. oh, boy. Okay, so people, yeah. people are watching. And the fun part is you should know at least two of these three panels, or these four panels. Because um, one is Kid, and the other one is some of Big Mom's people. That's right. Yeah. It's the Eggman and the Lion Man yes. from Big Mom's Pecans. crew. Pecans wow. and Tomago. Um, now, I, even I'm not sure who maybe some of these people are. I think I know who the the, the one below Pecans is. I thought it could be Hawkins, but Hawkins doesn't carry a katana like that. So I'm yeah. not sure. Oh, no. I was, I was thinking a lady with very long legs. But uh, Nami, no, nah, no, nah, but, <laughs> but why? Because she should has... be hanging out with some other. I don't know. Well, yeah, the point um... is, kids here now. Mm-hmm. Me and Joe have a patent pending theory about kid. I I came up with the theory. I was like, I think you came up with is. it, but I helped you flesh it out with some connecting yeah. points. Yeah. Um. So it's a roundabout. Uh, owned theory now. It's a roundabout exclusive. It's a roundabout. Ex- it generally is because I've never seen anyone bring it up, and it's a Big really fun though. theory. Now, him being here, did I talk to you about this yesterday, Joe? You you definitely messaged me a little bit about it uh, okay. throughout the week. Yeah, no, like I forgot that kid is one of the people watching, and like, he's not watching because he's interested. He's watching out of curiosity. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. I He's got to watch the news, stay informed, you know. <laughs> the black news. of The black, black news. Market, black market hmm. news. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, Smiley dies. Very good, Smiley. May we beat again and now be reborn as a weapon of mass destruction. He eats a big yeah, but, candy that kills him. Y'all, this fucking panel where the apple gets the swirlies on it, I was like, what the f- Fuck. This should be pretty enlightening on something we might have always wondered about. But I'll let you I'll let you talk, Bradley. What do you what do you what do you Is you this mean? so we know there should only ever be one of each fruit at a time. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So what I'm sitting here wondering is like when a devil fruit user dies. Just does just a random fruit somewhere in the world become the next devil fruit for that type? That's what is being shown here. It seems that's like that's fucking cool. It seems like yeah. the closest proximity apple became the devil fruit. Yeah. Now has Oda might have even talked? Did he talk about this in SBS yet? Because like he might have mentioned that, or that might be a later he, SBS where he clarified. He mentioned all the way back in Water Seven in that SBS saying like. There's a devil. Someone asked, like, "There's a devil fruit manual." That means someone has to have seen these devil fruits before, but only yeah. one can never exist. So how do they see him again? And yeah. he's like, "Ah, you'll learn soon." And 340 chapters later. This so is, uh, this, this was fucking really cool. cool. Now, yeah. okay, let's think back to when Blackbeard got two powers and broke the laws of One Piece. Goddamn. He threw a tarp over himself, so we weren't sure what he was doing. He but put it in his ass. But. <laughs> Potentially, he gra- he got a fruit and transferred the Gura Gura fruit to the most to the fruit he was holding under that tarp. That that's like the simple part of the theory. Like, but the question is, how is his body able to handle having two fruits? So we're we're still left in the dark, as it were, about that. The aspect. obvious answer is that he is three people, of course, and uh, the other two faces are in his pants. So he had to disrobe and feed one of them the fruit you got it i mean one of the big theories is that he's somehow multiple people but we'll see we'll have to see how that plays out um i'm pretty sure i know another person here 
The one in the bottom right? Because that hat looks familiar to me, and I'm going to... Also, that's scotch. I'm, I, it's a hat and a guy drinking scotch, thinking yeah. about death and getting horny at the thought of death with a hat. Hmm. I wonder oh, who that's, this could uh, be. That's, it's Heuchel and Michael. It's Heuchel and <laughs> Michael the streets. Of course. Yes, Bradley. More importantly is these mass people. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Mm. Now, the, this is fucked. Like the yeah. the fucking oh, land yeah. of death. He's like, man, we needed a, a poison that people couldn't run away from. So I'm just going to encase them in ash so that they die in the ash. Yeah, yeah I was sitting here like, how's... I was like, how's Oda going to make people live through this one? How did he do it again? Like, they, they're not dead immediately. Like, they have time to be treated if people go back for them. I yeah, because, so. like, I think he's he's made a guess before that I think is supposed to be more dangerous. But he made this one with the trade-off that it's supposed to stop them from being able to go get help. I think yeah. also the ash, like, slows entering your lungs because lungs, you're entirely covered in it, so it slows the poison from getting into you. I think that's yeah. another reason. Mm -hmm. I might be misremembering. Look at this. Uh, Look at this fun little pirate alliance right here. Yeah, everyone's making alliances, but as we know now, alliances, Might... something about alliances not being good. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you can't trust pirates. You can't? Yeah. It makes you wonder, though, like, with all these alliances being made between pirates, you get the sense that, like, man, maybe Luffy and Law would be the ones that, like, like get through it with no problems, you know? Like, that's that's man. the hope you get, that they be just become best friends. Because um, I don't see these fuckos working out well. Oh, <laughs> no, no, they're all these, assholes. These fucking jugheads. Look and, at, uh, look at you the know, fucking boys! Making all these pirate teams and alliances, I'm like, man, we gotta... There's, there's a war cooking. There, mm -hmm. There's most definitely... Big moves being made. Paramount War 2. Man, Oda said that the current arc is supposed to make Paramount War look like child's play. Yeah, so, man. Uh, I just like how Luffy is with Robin here. Just like, yeah. Dude, just remember Robin's part of the crew and let her do... Robin does do she, stuff this arc. She's good support. Yeah, you sitting there. She, she takes out the dragon later. She takes out the dragon and she like deflects Monet in a crucial point mm -hmm. where like she just breaks her apart with her hands. So like I feel like we're too harsh on Robin not getting to do anything. She does get to like have good support moments. Um, yeah. But I mean this arc every straw hat has good support moments, so. Mm -hmm. I love how Brooke can use a soul. Like it's su Brooks Brooke got such a cool power up from this soul controlling ability. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I in a different coat? There's a very good reason yeah. for bleh. <laughs> and then Sanji's just glad that his pride isn't hurt as well as his body. I like how Usopp is like, you know what? I'm proud of you, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there as as like gross as Sanji can be, there's also an admiral part to his his fucking mm. gimmick. I really like this this little set of panels. Do the job right. The new world starts from here. Yeah. And Sanji recognizing like Zoro so tough on himself, and mm -hmm. Luffy promising that he won't be careless again. So like we're finally Luffy is yet to get serious, but I feel like we're finally ramping up to like where his training has hit its limit and he has to like really try again. Yeah, because yeah. like so far since we came back from the time skip, it reminded me of really early One Piece where the Straw Hats like kind of steamroll most opponents yeah and yeah, they walked up to Arline park and punched that bitch yeah I mean, and you know as yeah. it's like as we got closer to the fishman island arc people just got like harder and harder and harder exponentially like it's it's pretty like rampant um i feel we gotta yeah. hit like the peak strength uh, like because it was three admirals and mm -hmm. all warlords there before we hit the time skip so like that's pretty harsh yeah you know, and now we're kind of back yeah. Like, we're finally back now to where they kind of steamroll everybody except for, like, the main arc villain. And then I'm sure, like, we're going to start ramping back up. It's really more like the start of the Grand Line. Because Luffy struggled yeah. against Don Krieg and Arlong, but he kicked um, Mr. Three and uh, yeah. Wapple's ass. So he gets, yeah. like, two arcs of, like... He tried... Like, this is an easier arc for Luffy than Fishman Island was because, like, 
Hody got some good hits in. Oh, yeah. And sure, Caesar beat Luffy once, but the second time around, it was very conclusive. It's like going to lane and not knowing what the character does. I'm like, oh, that's what he does. Hold on. <laughs> Joe, yeah. this was a hype panel to read. Do Let's you see. Do you understand? They won't. I don't. They're making a beeline for the R double six gate. R double six. Oh fuck! That's that's big brain. That is big brain. This, that's massive brain, actually. That's huge. This page fucks me up. I feel like this is where the G five. Like we've gotten so many moments with the G five, where this mm -hmm. is where like Oda really starts capitalizing on these side characters that we just met. But I certainly love these goof heads at this point. Reading through. The guy in the background going like this, like you're just like I'm like you feel so bad because they just like because they throw to Shigi to make sure she gets through. Like it's so I don't know. It's so yeah. well done. I Their know. like conviction to save her was so strong that like at, like as soon as she was home free, they're like we're good. Yeah, fuck. They do I, I am glad. Like I wish there was more death in One Piece, but I am glad these guys lived. Yeah, because this is harsh, man. Oda did a really good job with these Marines because I think it's really easy to like make a faction that's supposed to be the overall bad faction and just kind of have them be bad guys and jerks all the one all the time. But I think he does a really good job here and being like, these are people too, and they can like actually get bonds like the pirates do with their journeys as well. Yeah, this was a really good parallel to the bond of pirates we've never seen the bond of marines have we that no this is like the first time we actually see it the only we, we other see time it a little bit with full body and, and Django. a little bit with axiom morgan too at the very end when they're happy he's gone they're glad they can go back and oh, do their thing literally eons ago yeah <laughs> at this point it's so long ago but man this page like, mm -hmm. when Virgo says, in time, you might even grow fond of him as he's mercilessly killing those them. people. That yeah. was fucked up, dude. What a this villain. Is, yeah. Also, he's yeah. got Yakinori, like, skewer on his fucking cheek. Yeah. And, and you kind of look, and what's, like, the way that Oda draws this guy, it's like, oh, I kind of get why they like him. Like, this just look, he looks like a cool dude. He's just a quirky, like, dependable boss, you know? But yeah, from like the hits, fucking yeah, start, from the yeah. start, he was a spy. So like mm -hmm. he never, like they they were never real allies. Yeah, God. it's it, it's so good, and he does in like two or three chapters, and it's awesome. I'll, I'll ask now, like Bradley, how do you feel about the structure of Punk Hazard? As like, which parts are, is there like a, a part of it that you're not so hot about, or is there a part you like exceptionally? Because structurally, I feel like when the poison hits, this arc is like underratedly good mm -hmm. yeah like as far as how this arc flows it was kind of exceptionally well which is probably why speed ran it this weekend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, might uh, be, yeah. it, that might once be. it starts there's no really slow moment like you guys said it's really dense and this arc as i was reading it i was like this is just another prime example of how like every single arc oda likes to come up with a timer for the arc because mm -hmm. this one is like Okay, we've basically got five minutes until the gas has flooded this entire motherfucking facility. Yeah. I I really like how they have to like get into another room, board it up, and then try to get to the next room and then board that one up. So it's like a survival kind of game thing. And I just like that's such a really cool like like way to like picture like how much this gas is like spreading and, and how fast. And I love the structure of it, right? It's an upside down yeah. cross where like the kids and a lot of the straw hats are on the bottom. And then Law and Smoke are on the left, and Luffy is on the right with Momonosuke, right? So everyone's mm -hmm. funneling into the finale. And honestly, like, my first time going through this arc, this is the arc I might forget the... I, as, as, like, so Fishman Island is the arc I've read the latest, right? But I, it had so many standout moments and, like, really, like, memorable parts, like throwing the Noah and Luffy's fight that I remember mm -hmm. a lot more from this one. To me, this arc kind of, like, unjustly became the arc where the Straw Hats run a lot. But reading it all in a one go and not weekly like I did the first time, I really commend Oda how he turns the arc into this huge funnel upwards. 
and mm -hmm. plot threads that you didn't realize were being set up are resolving in ways that are way better than they have any right to be resolving. So it's mm -hmm. like just really commendable and like totally not Mark read through One Piece recently and he really like Punk Hazard is like his least favorite arc and I was just really surprised rereading because like this has up this arc significantly um, on reread, especially knowing what's to come. Punk Hazard mm -hmm. has so much DNA of modern One Piece. It branches off into every storyline that is to come. So that's really cool. I think also it's just it it's just really really fun too. It it's another one like I, Fisherman Island. We have a lot of this like political like racism undertones to it, yeah, which was really good. It, which yeah, which is great. But like you get the Punk Hazard, and this feels like uh, an adventure kind of just balls to the wall. Let's have fun yeah. situation, and I really like it. I heard a lady calling for me, and it's cool that she didn't actually call for him. Sanji just felt it. Like he just yeah. oh yeah he could sense it and man what a good kick I love when Oda does like the sharp spirals on people's head mm -hmm. to show rotation yeah. uh, can't wait for Shueisha to take down this video because I put this panel up to show how good the art is can't God even damn. analyze bullshit anymore you're trying to pass it off as your own work Willer yeah I'm profiting <laughs> off of this. I am Oda. I love this page and this interaction between Luffy and Smoker. Yeah. This is such <laughs> a human, like, Smoker, not yet. <laughs> Give me a sec. And then mm -hmm. where he's like, <laughs> he opens the door and he just goes straight for the gut punch. So, yeah. like, I like how Luffy literally caused the fire to appear on the ground. He was running so fast. Oh, shit, he really did. That's pretty funny. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think I just like this. Okay. No, okay. People often get confused with how hockey interacts with Logios, right? Yeah. And I did too when I was rereading uh, Marine Forward. I was like, wait, shouldn't Aokiji have died when he gets stabbed by, like, Whitebeard's Naginata? But what happens is, and Smoker shows this too, you hit them, you literally blow their head off, but they will reform and have taken the damage. So, like... You're cutting them apart, and you're, like, blasting their body pieces off, but they'll be able to reform back into human form. You just were just able to damage them. Yeah. yeah. Like, and also, like, it's something that they can recover from once they get hit. I, for some reason, like, in my mind for a while, I had it where it's like, oh, if you get hit by, like, a stabbing attack, or, like, you get sliced in half, you literally are dead. But, like, that's not quite the case. Yeah, it's like they can still reform, but it's like it's like they're not immune to knockback anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they um, can still get tired out, I guess. Like, yeah. they, well, they, they still, still take still damage, damage, right? Like that's the thing. Like yeah. Caesar was bleeding there. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, man, this is this is a very short but great, greatly paneled little scuffle. Oh yeah. Like so, so he blocks the kick and then kicks through it and then turns it into a heel strike, and it's just so well paneled out. Um, and yeah, like Sanji cannot, he, even his strong ass legs can't handle Virgo. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that this is a scuffle like that is had. However, it does get the trend of like Zoro gets to do conclusively cool things while Sanji has to struggle. And it's a problem a lot of like, and Bradley's not aware of like this horrid part of the One Piece community that is Zoro stands and Sanji stands, but... Oh, Th God. This comes up a lot for the Sanji stands, where it's like, man, Oda never gets Sanji like the conclusive W. Like he always man, you remember struggle. Virgo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they talk about like, man, Sanji like struggled against this Virgo, and that in that arc, Zoro didn't struggle at all against anything. Meanwhile, Sanji gets some cool things, but we won't worry about those till later. I mean, Sanji gets the better character moments, so it's so true he does. Uh, wow, that there's so. Do Don Quixote, Doflamingo. He's manspreading. And he's probably mansplaining. He's yeah. fucking awesome looking. Look at this dude. Uh, what do you think about the little girl there, the little lowly chan? Uh, I wonder what she is to him. I don't know. <laughs> She's a, well, is, she, is she a henchman, or is she, like, a, somehow a really good assassin, or... She, I, I like this character, and I like her design. Mm-hmm. Yo, the boys are together. <laughs> the real boys. Um, 
but wait, my fellows, I have a score to settle with Dragonkind. So that's yeah. interesting. Apparently, Wano has some history. Now, we know, like, Ryuma killed a dragon, but, like, are there dragons in Wano? Did a dragon kill Kinemon's family? Like, there's something with Kinemon. Like, he keeps hinting to things about his past, and I just want to highlight them for when we do get to his past. We're like, oh, cool. I see how this connects now. Yeah. This is just. <gasps> this is... God damn. This is just neat. Oh, man. I love the wind up before punches in One Piece. Dude, like, holy fuck. What that I, is. What I love I about just... this one is Virgo's, like, how awkward his body is after the punch. He's just flailing. Oh, yeah. Gotta love it. Did and you I... get the panel of Smoker, like, swirling around Virgo? I don't think I did. That's one of my favorite panels in One Piece is that they're fighting and, like, Smoker almost kind of looks like a snake in his Logia form. I mean, it looks like he's about to, like, pounce on him. It, it made me go, like, man, that's a, it just, it just sticks out to me as a really cool Smoker shot. I just love how he's rocketing his punch. Like, if yeah, that's like he's like, <laughs> it looks so nice. So, yeah. I, I just grabbed this because, like, this is what we're building up to. Everyone meeting in the middle in the R66 gate and then Caesar killing them all. Mm-hmm. Man, okay, I do have to... So let's talk about Caesar's character, right? We, we've we <clears throat> danced around it, but I feel like now's a good time. Caesar is disgusting. He's oh, like yeah. the worst person he ever. He is by far the worst... Like, I think he's worse than Spandom. I mean, I could see that. Like, at least Spandom, like, tells you you're a slime in front of you. Like, he will think you're a slime, tell you you're, you're his best friend, and then stab you in the back, as we have seen this entire arc. It's like, Spandom is so horribly wrong, but he still at least thinks he's the good guy, yeah, I think. Yeah, I genuinely like, believe, like, Spandom's a masochist, don't get me wrong, but he also believes, yeah. like, I can be cruel to this person because I'm justified in killing them, so I'm gonna double dip, you know? Yeah, but yeah. Caesar Clown... Knows he's horrible. <laughs> yeah. The thing that makes Caesar infuriating is that he's actually a god tier actor because he gets everyone to believe him. Oh yeah. Then only then can my world of peace come to fruition. Like, look at this fucking sleazy slime ball. Like, Luffy forgives everyone. This is one character I could never see him forgiven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look at his fucking face. Fuck this guy. And uh, he's like, man, okay, you knew would love some of my weapons. I'm like, yeah, I bet that fucking dick would love your <laughs> weapons. Uh, Vegapunk's just jealous of my brilliance. I hear the human experiment, human enlargement experiments failed again. So Vegapunk seems to also have been dabbling in human enlargement. <laughs> you can't human just, enlargement, you say? You can't just <laughs> grow bodies like magic. Hmm. So I wonder what I wonder what kind of person would want technology that's to a, enlarge that's an line lawyer. Yes, it is. Um, what? So, like, you need. So he comes up with a brilliant idea of you need to kidnap growing children and pump them full of drugs, which actually, like, not a bad idea. I see where yeah. you're coming from. Like, you can't make me an adult be here large all of a sudden. But if someone's yeah. already growing, you just pump them full of fucking hormones. You just yeah. But like, one of the most disturbing parts of this arc is knowing that this batch of kid is kids are not the ones yet, and that they are just the first step in the experiment, and knowing that they're all gonna die eventually. Yeah, because oh isn't he God. basically like whenever they get old enough that they're done with like their growing phase? He's like, I'll just get rid of them and get more kids. Yeah, yeah. they're basically just experiment. Like they're a test group for when mm -hmm. like. And he's probably, how many test groups are he, is he going to have until he perfects this drug, you know? Yeah. And we know Monosuke. He's a little dragon boy. Yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, Shinron looking ass. Shinron looking ass. He's pink, little bitch. He important is pink. Note. Yeah. Important note, he is pink. So get... Uh oh get, what? Get all, yeah. cool, get all cool notions out of your head right now. What the yeah. fuck? He's pink. Let me go. I'll find a picture for you. People watch the anime, huh? Yeah, I, Oda, well, more like Oda's decision for colors are universally bad. I think Jesus. Oda has a really bad eye for colors. Now, God, it's cool because it's colorful, but like, I don't think he thinks about what this is all going to look like when it's clashing together. Yeah. Because um, like a, a lot of characters, like individually, their colors might be cool, but then like 
whenever you open up a frame of the anime and you have like every single possible RGB value, that, it's like yeah. That's what Come makes on. the the like Fishman Island straw hats look so bad together. I think they're like their colors are so hard on the eye when you see them all lined up in those outfits. I will say, actually, while we're here, Robin looks great this arc. I really mm -hmm. love her outfits in this arc. Um, uh, uh, yeah, she's fucking hot. I'm gonna and... say something extremely controversial, but you. Kinemon uh, calls her a. Is is Kinemon the one who calls her a hooker? Coruscant. He, he, yeah. A, a Cortesian. Yes. Cortesian. Uh, Kinemon, he, he's, he, he seems a little backwards from a backwards land. You gotta understand, they did mention Wano is closed off in borders. Ooh. So, he somehow escaped and, like, he might not know a lot about the outside world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will mention, controversially, Frankie has his best design of all time in this arc. Mm. I can see that. He his, first of all, he's got the pompadour back, but mm -hmm. he's got the sunglasses and a cool jacket where even his yeah. big shoulders look cool. Mm -hmm. I really grew to like his design this arc. I was really feeling it. The second pre time best, skip Frankie's the only way. Nah, man. The second best though would be pre time skip Thriller Bark Frankie, where he's got the bandolier of grenades. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So Kinemon seems to hate pirates. Momo has this idea of pirates that they are enormous men of wide girth, ferocious and menacing. So clearly they have these ideas of pirates that I think correlates with them not being in the outside world. Their ideas of pirates might be a little skewed based on whatever pirates they have run into. But yeah. also, like, you're right. Everyone is tall and wide in this world except for Luffy and crew. Yeah. So. But I think that's also important because Luffy's the one that will change his mind. As he does. Um, I want I want to point out something that infuriates me about Oda's coloring. Um, can you go back to that panel with Momonosuke? Mm -hmm. That one right there. Okay. So, generally speaking, when a when you're wearing a lighter color, you leave like that color. Oh my fucking god! It drives me insane. So if you look over in the in our chat, I have Momonosuke's colors up, and he has yellow he has yellow scales on his back, and they're colored black here, and it's infuriating. Oh, I see. There's a character who has black hair in the most recent arc, but is blonde, and it yeah. makes me so fucking irrationally angry. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's so bad. Yeah. And then a character. Yeah. Oh my the, god. The thing is, like, this wouldn't bother me if his color wasn't this pink and yellow color. Like, if he was, like, a green and then, like, a darker blue or something, he's like, okay, I can understand that that coloring of the... He could have been color. pink and black for all... Like, yeah. it's just, like, make, like, don't color it in with ink, Oda. I, why am I, I, get I, why am I having to teach the manga god about manga? But I also get it because if he didn't color it in, you would not know there's that spine going across his back. Um, but it's, like... It's just so infuriating. Don't color it that way, then. I don't know. I th no, I agree. Or, 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 yeah, like, you draw in black and white first. So they... we got artificial devil fruits. Momonosuke's yeah. was a failure of an artificial de devil fruit. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. What do you think, like, uh, what do you think Caesar was trying to get at with here? I think he was trying to make genuine, dr like, a big old dragon fruit. I think, well, I think he was trying to... Up. I, I think he was trying to make dead ass Shinron. Dead ass Shinron. Yeah, you're right. This would be Vegapunk. Yeah, so, that could be a One Piece character name. Dead ass Shinron. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. They do the mention. They mention later that the smile fruits are Zoan specific. Uh, yeah. That they create, so they're making like an army of Zoans. Here it is, man. Look at this fucking clown. <laughs> In another <laughs> five years, batch of subjects won't be around any longer. Fuck this dude. And Momo's like, yikes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This confused the fuck out of me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Clearly that's Doflamingo, right? But like, why? And I've read the manga and I'm still like, why? Maybe we'll get some more next arc, but I yeah. cannot fathom what this could be referring to. Yeah, I'm like, not sure. So, cause like Momo needs like a a boost to start flying, and he suddenly thinks of Doflamingo and yells, "Get a grip!" But like Doflamingo's like spooking him. 
I yeah. don't know. If, if any one of the comments can, like, answer what Momo's relationship with Doflamingo is that would prompt this to... There's another character I could see being mm -hmm. in this spot. I, I don't know. This is just weird to me. Y'all, look at fucking T Child Magellan. I know, what dude. What the fuck is Cell Death? What? <laughs> Oh, ground looking ass. He looks like some Hey Arnold bullshit. Yeah. Sal Death was this height until he hit like 20, and then over two years he grew into a tall man. Because, like, God this damn. is the height he is in, in that arc. He's a tall, tall man. Oda seems to think children have, like, no feet. Like, I guess. The, look, at, look at fucking Sadie's tiny little, like, non existent little feet. Willer wants to see kid feet, all right? <laughs> I just, I mean,. I mean, I like that Hannibal was a fire dancer at one point, and like he just looked so proud of, of yeah. doing that. He's so excited. Also, uh, poor Caribou. Hmm. Oh yeah, oh, poor yeah. poor poor guy. Poor Caribou, really feeling bad for this guy. Yeah. Yo, big titty ice witch. Yo, Monet's She's fruit. So good. I really like Monet's attacks. Like she does some cool stuff with her snow snow fruit. And so this I is so snow. Scared his antlers jumped off. So this is snow, snow as opposed to ice, 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 ice. ice. So yeah. it's probably like a weaker version, but she can. She seems like she can do like more fine, like because it's a fine powder. So it seems like there's more precision here in the kind yeah. of stuff that she does. Robin it's comes more... through. Mm -hmm. I like. Okay, I think this is after the fight with Zoro. I want to talk about Zoro's fight because I, for a long time, I hated, like, this was maybe my least favorite Zoro moment in the entire series. Upon reread, this could actually be brilliant. It depends if Oda goes certain locations with this fight, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, first Zoro doesn't want to, like, cut, uh... Monet, so he suddenly, so suddenly Zoro is Sanji, and it's like, yeah. I thought you were a badass, dude. But then mm -hmm. again, throughout the series, he, he belittle, he kind of like looks down on people. We're like, really, you're going after the weakling trio? Like he literally says this arc, and in uh, Skypea, he's like, you did that to a woman, and then Enru like, well, she's a fucking thought, <laughs> so whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so like. Zoro is pretty shogunistic, but like, is that not incredibly fucked up when your childhood friend's whole trauma came from the fact that she would never be considered a true warrior as a female swordswoman? And now you grow up and you don't give female swordswomen or females like the the like equal fight. It just felt so wrong to me. Uh yeah, it is a little. Incongruent. A li it's incongru it, a little bit is pushing it. I feel like it's completely like character ruining given like his origins. However, he does eventually like scratch her. So there's that. And also the line, have you ever seen a wild beast who is cornered and doesn't bite back? Uh, paraphrasing is one of the most badass lines in One Piece. It is pretty badass. <laughs> uh, and I love his attack where it's like, he just does a sword swing with so much intent behind it that she passes out and can't even reform herself because she's so scared. Like, God damn. It, all, that it, was really fucking it's cool. It's almost Conqueror Hockey-esque, but it's just like, no, I just did it with like how much of a badass yeah. I am. It's not a hockey. It's just like he's that fucking imposing. Cool. Now, the way that this becomes cool, and this might go into my Smoker 3-beat theory... Next oh, time he meets with Tashiki, he has to come to terms with the fact that he has let Kuina's trauma down and has not been fair to what her worries are and to women fighters. If Oda highlights the fact that Zoro is being sexist throughout the series near the end and he has to learn from it, then actually it's a really good, like, thousand plus chapter storyline because it starts really early and you get stop gaps for it throughout the way however if this is where he leaves it off this moment is shit to me and it yeah and but we'll we'll have to see where it goes right i feel like in the most recent arc 
I, I have some feeling Zoro's changed a little bit. That or he's being very transphobic. But we'll see whichever That's way true. it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it could go well, I don't know, man. Well, no, because that person's uh You know what? No, Zoro has grown a little bit. We'll talk about it in four hundred chapters, but Yeah. But it's still it, it's a moment that worries me. Yo, can we talk about Mocha? Mocha This little girl is so brave and such an MVP. I love her. Dude, her fucking balls. I like I, I was like she just sacrificed herself for all these other kids. Like on a whim. She and fucking I was like, goes through it. Like sure yeah. she lives, but the pain was real. Mocha is like one of the actual real fucking heroes. I'm actually like, really upset because I completely forgot this character existed, and she probably God scored damn. really low on our tier list when me and Joe did it. And, and like, that's an L. Like, why don't people complain about this? Just the other day, someone commented, "Wow, y'all put Hody below top ten. I'm like, you have to be trolling. <laughs> 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 we like Hody more than most people, I bet. And like, you're still trolling. Um. That uh, Joe, our tier list is like the most hated video. Like somehow it's still positive in likes, but every couple of days we have like, this is the worst tier list I've ever seen. I've seen that in Portuguese even. So some Brazilian <laughs> dude just showed up, skipped to the end, and he's like, "Eu não gosto," which means I don't like. <laughs> we're we're like two thousand away from ten thousand in that video, which would be crazy. That's good for us. I know, right? Uh. Damn, this is the I killed Mufasa of One Piece, man. God. And, like, I really feel for Brownbeard here. And his, like, uh, it, it's kind of like with Virgo and the G5. G5 really doesn't want to believe that Virgo is the person he is. Brownbeard and Caesar's followers are the same way with Caesar. So, like, just really multiple ways to hit the same point, and they all land for me. Brownbeard's fucking going through it. I want to see like the fucking cafeteria lunch table where you got like white beard and black beard sitting at a table and brown beard walks out up with his lunch tray <laughs> and they just like ponder whether they should let him sit with him. They do let him sit, but there's a guy named Peach Beard who does not get to sit. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I that would actually there might, happen. There might also be a blue beard. I'm not sure. That is uh, like the canon Oda response to me already. <laughs> Yeah, I just did the SBS for you. Dude, this page is massive lore drops. Oh, no. So, the sad, gets sh the sad is a chemical that gets shipped to Doflamingo's factories in Dressrosa and turned into Smile. Smile's a man-made devil fruit that will that has some risks, and I'm sure we'll see what those risks are later, but they are pretty much producing Zoans. And as we know, like, Zoans are, like, the physical best of the, the three fruit tiers. So this is just an army of, like, a bunch of heavy hitters. I oh, yeah. From what I hear, one of the four emperors is already putting together an army of hundreds of Zoans. Who do you think? Who is this emperor? Uh, shit. Doflamingo's not an emperor. No. He's not. Okay, so hold on. We got Big Mom. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We got Shanks. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We got fucking, uh, well, Whitebeard's fucking dead. We got Whitebeard's um, replacement. Oh, we, we, have Black, we have Blackbeard and we have uh, Kaido. Kaido, right, yeah. So, let me think through this. Shanks, unlikely, quite frankly. Yeah. The uh, cool twist, though, is that he's just getting these fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> that would be a huge fucking twist. Big Mom, I think, I think she's just a little too busy with her snack acquisitions to plan all that <laughs> shit. No, uh, no counter argument to that. She had a weird lion man who didn't yeah. seem to be transformed, but he could have been in a lion form. But mm -hmm. Tamago, Tamago didn't show his devil fruit. Did he? No, he didn't. No. Okay. He's got a cool one. It's actually not a Zoan. I don't think. Then, um, for Blackbeard, I, I think, as the the like the anti Luffy, I, I think he wants to stick with his crew. Granted, his crew's not as close as Luffy's is. He did just recruit a bunch of these guys on a whim from the lowest level of Impel down. But I'm sure they're best friends by now. I, I don't I don't think he'll rely on this army. Mm -hmm. And also because like he doesn't fucking need it. 
he has two of like the strongest devil fruits in the world. My beard seems kind of like a numbers man. Like he looks at the spreadsheet and says, "Like ah, oh, this man has the highest attack value. I take him." And not think about anything. <laughs> yeah, he he recruits the high cost units. Yeah. So the emperor I know the least about is Kaido, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna go with Kaido. We're gonna go with Kaido. Um, man, I I'm think excited. It... You will get the answer to. I'm like you'll be able to deduce the answer to that uh, when you read mm-hmm. the next few chapters. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I think what's interesting also about being zone fruits is that if you think about it, zones are the ones that you need probably the least amount of time to learn. Yeah. Um, but the longest time to master. Yeah, that's that's that seems to be the trade off. Like Oda was saying back in Water Seven that like if you're already naturally gifted, zones give you a huge boost. And um, also because yeah. like it's it's the one fruit whose strength you can train because like. Yeah. Lokia okay. and Paramecia, it's like mm-hmm. you get better at using it, yeah. but mm-hmm. the raw strength is always there. Yeah, yeah. the Zoans are like hard ADCs where they just scale exponentially oh, with their They're top-lane bruisers. Yeah, and top-lane bru- but like, But yeah, like it's just like if you just spend a lot of time training, you're just going to get naturally better and stronger yeah. and like you're, you'll be good. Whereas like Paramecia, like Luffy had to fucking come up with everything for his fruit. Oh, yeah. Like there's there's flashback at Great Terminal is like your fruits they're like your fruits worthless. There rubber is not a fighting fruit. You can't be a pirate like that. He's like I bet. He's a bitch. <laughs> also, we didn't talk about Gum Gum UFO. Um, oh my god, we're getting <laughs> some, like Oda's really coming out with the new moves mm-hmm. since the time skip. My favorite part of UFO is how fun it is to use in the Warrior games because it's, yeah, you, know, you just like, move right. forward and mow people down. That's that's it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I really like Caesar's line here. Do you see the scale of what's happening here? If you interfere mm-hmm. with Doflamingo's business, it will bring the wrath of some of the most powerful people into the world. And Luffy is interfering with the business very... Luffy and Law. Mostly Law, really. Luffy's just out here kidnapping people. Well, Luffy uh, said, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Man. Are you okay. The- <laughs> what, what are you bitching about, Joe? There's a... Uh- the page turn after is that his response is that he just fucking punches Caesar Salad in the face. I can't get every... I'm Caesar talking, Salad! I'm trying... I'm, I have to make some cuts for brevity picture's sake. True. But this is one of, like, the most quoted lines in One Piece because it's just such, like, a... We started the super saga of the new world. Like, mm-hmm. Whitebeard just left his mark. The Marines are bolstering their strength. None of the big players have acted. They're only preparing... That war was nothing more than a prologue. Like you've always said, a new age is coming with unmatched power and age of the Darien Mighty. And I do remember Doflamingo does talk about like a new age is coming, like an age of... Doesn't he even <laughs> say like an age of smiles? Yeah, I think and, so. Like he either says smiles or laughter. Um, he I, said... I believe he explicitly says smile. Yeah. And I just um, like that Law is just like aware that he's privileged to be one of this generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which well, is cool. he's the, he's the first big playmaker because as he says, I've destroyed the gears and no one can turn back. Law just did something that mm-hmm. has spiraled, like that has kicked off the conflict of the new generation and yeah. the old generation. And it's fucking hype, man. What I really, so film Z I've never watched. But what I love that this this is a one two this is a four page spread that shows every single and I mean every single marine we have ever seen in the franchise. Younger. Fucking a! That is so impressive. I was looking through it. I was like, they literally got everyone. That's incredible. Like there's Smoker, there's Hina, Akainu. You got Brand New who does like the all the posters. Aokiji, Kizaru, you got all the Buster Call bros down here. You got Saul, you got uh, Bellamir was in there. There's Virgo in the back. I didn't capture like all the, the pages, but like it's just there's Bellamir right there. Actually, it's just super cool. You also have um, what's his name? The the sumo guy. He's in the back as well. Yeah, I mean they're all there. Mm-hmm. Luffy will never forgive Caesar for this as Luffy winds up a big fucking attack. And he just launches that motherfucker. Anyways, Caesar's been defeated, but we're not done yet because Joker sends Baby Five and Buffalo to go retrieve him. 
Yo, I'm so in love. She's so perfect. Oh, yeah. Wait, does he need me? She's got I love her such a like, good I lo- gimmick. I-, I-, I love how Oda just has personality quirks for everybody that are so perfect. He, not like I think what I like about Oda is that like not literally every character has a personality quirk, and some of them are minor quirks. Like I just have a speech impediment where I go yeah. roar like Peckhams or something. But wow. like, but he sprinkles enough like severe character gimmicks throughout that always keeps you on your toes. Oh, this yeah. is so funny. And so, would th- would this be a paramecia fruit or this is a paramecia? Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I was like, she literally turns into guns so and she, like can she, re- reshape her body. So I didn't know if she was also. Well, I didn't know if she was a logia. Even I don't know. She turns into them, but because it's not an element, and she can't like right, right. a logia like Enaru, for example. He made a thundercloud, and then he can shoot lightning from that thundercloud by utilizing it. Right? She can't look at a gun and manipulate it. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. That's the distinction there. Um, this is an interesting cover page for many reasons. I think the spacing of the characters is very interesting here. Um, more like on a vertical axis. And Joe, I, I do recommend you like save this one and take a look. Cause I thought it was pretty neat how, like, if you look vertically, you see like mirrors of characters that have connections that are kind of like unique and you won't like, you won't catch it at first, but like this is, Interesting cover page that makes me think, like, wow, Oda really has, like, planned a lot of stuff out. Also, and this one is pretty blatant, anytime Shanks is in a cover page, every single time, maybe not, like, a chapter cover page, but in a volume cover page, every single time it is with Blackbeard also in that cover page. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty interesting. Now, we know Blackbeard gets his awesome. scar. And, like, both of them are doing, like, the same thing where it's, like, face tilted down, eyes in shadow, one's yeah. facing left, one's facing right. Yeah, um, so, like, one thing, yeah, so, like, one thing is, like, if you leave Killer as, like, a middle point, Blackbeard and Shanks are on the opposite sides. If you use Doflamingo as a middle point, Akaino and Aokiji on the opposite sides. And then you have, like, Jimbei and someone we don't know, and then kid and someone we don't know just a lot of little, little interesting things but then you got uh, a poo just chilling here like i'm sad know. that uh i'm sad kizaru didn't make the cut he's, yeah we don't know what monkey boy is kizaru does kind of get the shaft out of the three a little uh, bit he's like my favorite one too i love him Shame. fucking adam sandler and spot a girl this is the dumbest looking thing i love it god damn <laughs> she looks so stupid in all her forms and i'm really glad that she does <laughs> I wish she was in Pirate Warriors 4. We, she there was a leak be that playable. Been... You know what, Joe? Apparently there's rumors that we will get another DLC pack, and I hope it has the Don Quixote family members. But that she, would be she sick. probably wouldn't make the cut. But, It'd uh, be Diamante for sure. Yeah. But, uh, already... So what I really like about this, you, I think something that you guys probably know about me, because I say it kind of often is when the villain treats their minions as disposable. So Caesar does it here, but, like, Caesar's not even supposed to be taken, like, any way complexly. Like, he is just scum. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah. Joe Flamingo is giving such a genuine heartfelt thanks to everything you've done to this day to Virgo. And that mm-hmm. just immediately makes me more engaged, more interested in the Doflamingo Flamingo family dynamic. He's just like a classier evil right here, you know? Mm-hmm. And I love, and we've already seen glimpses of this, how all the Doflamingo pirates call, like, Doflamingo, like, the young lord or the young king. Yeah. He is their prince of evil, and they, like, have really devoted their lives to his cause, which is pretty sick. Yeah. I think, yeah. And here's another one. Uh, goodbye, young master. You are indeed the man who shall be king of the pirates. As Monet, she's willing to blow up the whole. Mm-hmm. She's willing to blow up the whole factory, because we thought she was Caesar's person, right? But really, Doflamingo sent her to keep track of Caesar. Or I think maybe Caesar requested her to come here, and she did it because she's so devoted to Doflamingo. Yeah. Doflamingo planted Monet here, and uh, look no, how what? distraught he is with this little chessboard right there that. All this shit, he's losing so many pawns, but he does seem to genuinely care that he's losing these pawns more than... Like, it feels beyond a strategical level. Like, he's kind of fucking upset. Mm-hmm. 
But then, like, something I really like about this page is Doflamingo losing an ally, the G5 men that we lost, Brownbeard, mm-hmm. who's lost many people, and the Caesar people who have lost their master. Like, it feels like kind of random panels, but in, like, these nine panels, you really get, like, this idea of all these people who have lost a lot. But then there's also the Straw Hats, so I feel like maybe that's there to contrast people who mm-hmm. have who have protected all their people, which would be the Straw Hats. I don't know, just, just a neat page there. The big old switcheroo, where when Law gave him Smoker's heart, he actually was like, here, you can have Monet's heart back. So... Yo, this um, moment was just... Unfucking believable. That's you, you. You're starting to see. I feel like why so many people love Law. Like he makes power plays, and he's got a great personality. So what's not to love? And is this oh, yeah. sick? Uh and this is exactly where you left off, right? Yes, I was like, holy fuck, we're about to do it. He's fucking coming, my dude. Damn it! I was super excited to talk about the other stuff, but we mm-hmm. will leave it here then. God damn, I'm man. I still don't even know what Doflamingo does, really, so, like entirely, and I'm just so terrified. Of, terrified. Of I, I think you'll know. You'll think. I think you'll know whenever he touches down, yeah. wherever he's going. They don't. They don't explicitly tell you, but they they show you some of his cool stuff here. Yeah. God, he looks sick in that panel. This like he looks like ass. an actual demon. This is one of like the best panel contenders because it's like such a oh shit like Doflamingo's moving moment. Mm-hmm. Um. Especially when, like, he got introduced all the way back at the end of Alabasta, and, like, we haven't seen a lot from him, and he's just been in every, like, he's been, he was in the Paramount War, he showed up to, like, every meeting. He showed up at the end of Jaya to kill Bellamy. Yeah, and you're just, this guy's doing things, but I don't know what his shtick is, and now you're getting to the point, like, oh, he's about to, like, intercept directly with the Straw Hats. Man, when's Bellamy coming back? I don't know, man. That'd be weird. Seems like we're getting to a Doflamingo storyline if there, if ever there was a time. Yeah. They would be now. Uh, Bradley, what did you think of Punk Hazard? There's a little bit left. Um, it probably won't change your opinions too much either way. But do remind me to keep these pictures I take in for the next talk we do. It was pretty damn entertaining. Like, obviously, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. I feel like as far as, like, uh, you know, themes and analysis. Th- this is like not one of the deepest arcs in One Piece. Like, it's pretty surface level, like, cool plot stuff happening, cool action happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the plot and action stuff that is happening is so fucking good. I-, I think thematically, it did a pretty fucking good job. Just like it explored the same theme in a lot of angles and the way it coalesced these plot lines. Like, de- like oh man, there's imagery at the end of this arc that really would have highlighted my point. So we definitely got to talk about that before we do dress for Rosa next time, but yeah. Cool. Um, Caesar clown probably like probably won't be in my top 10 one piece villains. Cause there's some really fucking good villains in the story, but he is a dude you fucking love to hate. He's yeah. so he's, he's memorable. I think he made for a good villain yeah. for sure. I, I do. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I don't remember Caesar clown more for this arc, but for other things, I, I do like him though. I, like, I he he leaves a pretty good impression on me this arc. Like I really remember just how disgusting he is, but like I didn't remember quite how disgusting he was. This I guy, think to me like the biggest like villain takeaway from this is Virgo. Like to me that's like I, I don't know. I just thought Virgo was a much more like imposing villain and just it feels so much more emotionally like retching when you get to that point he's just murdering all these guys it's that it's was on true the- beating virgo is the more the bigger pop off uh yeah. of the arc so that is something to consider for sure uh anyways bradley's gonna read dress rosa by the next week so, yes or, we'll give him two weeks and we'll be back soon enjoy hey, yeah 110 chapters to read ah. yeah yeah, he's got 11 volumes. I will say, though, Bradley, congratulations. You did. Congratulations. You, first of all, you completed the, You completed all three of the box sets, even though you did no. this last batch in the, in, the, in the iPad. So even if you were still reading physical, like it literally ends like 
on one of these upcoming chapters, and that's it. Um, the, where I'm still waiting for the fourth box set so I can have that collection. You mm -hmm. have entered the modern One Piece storyline, and you are three arcs away, and one of those is a mini arc from joining us in the current arc. So that's really exciting. I think one thing that sped me up is I started paying for it, and I was like, well, I, I guess if I'm paying for it and it's sitting there, uh, I should. Two dollars a month is pretty steep. I know, dude. <laughs> also it's like right there so like yeah. if you just get like a free moment or you're just even waiting for something like when i was when we were working on bedloff i'm like oh well, i'm waiting for this person to respond to me i'll read a chapter or two of one piece and you just read it and you're you're good to go yeah i i at least for i think ipads is like is a very bingeable way to con consume manga bingeable bingeable all right we're good for now bye-bye everyone uh, uh, oh,